Welcome back to another Construct video and in this video we're going to show how to save and load key variables properly. Let's get started. So when we talk about key variables today we're going to be looking at has the player got a key, what coins they've got, how many deaths they've got and what level they're currently on. And we're going to be doing this without save states. Save states take up a lot more memory, they only save actually what's happening currently on the screen and they don't permanently store any variables. Instead, we're going to be adding a new object and taking advantage of something called local storage. Now, if you're on browser, this will be your saved cache. If you're downloading this game, it will actually create a separate save file. If you're creating this as an app, it will create a separate save file for this to go into. So local storage is the way to go. So we're going to insert this into our game. It's just going to add it like you would with a keyboard or anything like that. It's not actually going to do anything to our game, but it will give us access to some new programmable functions. So I'm going to go into my event sheet. I've hidden the code from this game so far. However, if you do want to check out this code for yourself, it's not only just available in the Google Drive, but there is a full video on how I did everything up to this stage, including adding the coins, the HUDs, the tick boxes, all of that. I'm just going to close that for now. I'm going to right click and I'm actually going to create a new function. Now this function is going to be called save. And the reason we're doing this as a function and not just a block of code it just means we can call it any point. So we're going to call it when the player dies and when they reach the end of a level. But you could also do it at certain other key points. So every five seconds, auto save, or when they've got an achievement, save the game. So it gives you that little bit of extra control. So we're going to add an action with our local storage. And we're going to be using two main functions in here. The set item for saving and the get item for loading. So let's have a look at the set item first. So the set item first of all requires a key. Now this is just a name you're going to associate with the value that you're going to save. So for instance, if I want to save the coins, I need to give this a name I'm going to remember. Coins is pretty much what I'm going to call it. So these are going to be very much close to your variable names. Now the first thing I'm going to do is actually create a variable called save name. This has no purpose apart from just going to be a check of have we got a save file or not when we load the game. So for this one, I'm just going to write new. It doesn't need to be anything exciting, just new. We can then go back into our local storage and repeat the set above. So again, we're going to set item. And this time we will do our coins. And apologies for my mouse, it seems to be on its way out. So if you hear me double clicking frantically, that's why. Um, and then we're just going to write coins as our variable name that you can see at the top of the screen. Again, just repeat these steps for the different variables that you want. So this time we're going to do Deaths is the name and deaths as the variable. Now for layout, all I'm going to do is just quickly create a new global variable called current layout and I'll store it as a string and the value can be empty for now, it doesn't matter. And we don't actually need to do anything with this yet until we get to loading, but I thought we'll create it now while we're in this event sheet. So again, just go into my local storage, go to set item and we can store which layout we're currently on. And the value for this one is going to be layout name. So not the current layout, because again, that's blank, but the layout name of the layout we're currently on. Next, I'm going to add an action, go back to our local storage and set item once again. And this is going to be, have I picked up the yellow key? So the yellow key is just a pickup item you can get in the game that you can use to open the end door. So again, I'm just going to set this to the Boolean has yellow key. And then the final thing is actually an array that I've got. Now there's nothing in this array. Um, I'm not going to show you anything complicated with arrays today. Just how to actually save and load them using this as well, because it works slightly differently. So I'm going to go back to our local storage and go to set item. I can call this array, but we can obviously save it for the different types of arrays that we've got. And then we're just going to do the name of the array. So mine's just called array and then as JSON. This will convert a whole array into a string of text that we can then reload into our array later on. So that's our save file set up. Obviously we need to trigger this somehow. So I'm going to go into my code. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to call it a certain point. So I've done this already, but you can see that I've called the function save on player destroyed. So saved here. I've also called it if they get to the end of a level, whether it's level one or level two. And again, if you've never used functions before, just add an action function and your functions that you've created will be at the bottom. So that's it for saving. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run this first of all, and let's collect a bit of save data. So 
So just about to close this now, you can see that we've got three deaths. I've collected the yellow key and I've got 49 coins. So because I've died since then, I can die again. It's actually saved that information for next time. So I'm going to hit the X. And before we go any further, I just want to show you actually how you can check if your information has been saved. You can click on debug layout. It's going to run once again. Again, we're not loading anything. So none of this has been loaded yet. But if I scroll down and I look for the local storage option, it will actually show you what I've saved. So I've saved my entire array, which again is empty at the moment, but you could obviously have an array that's filled. 49 coins, four deaths. Layout should be layout two, so it should be on level two. The save name, which is called new, and yellow key, you'll see is one. So with booleans, it doesn't actually save it as true or false, it just saves it as one or zero, which comes to our own little challenges later on as we'll get to with loading. So in terms of loading, the best way to do it is actually with a new layout. So I'm gonna to scroll to the top, right click on my layouts folder and add a layout. I'm gonna add an event sheet also, and we'll start by giving this a name of preload layout, okay? And we might even want to do the same with our event sheets. We've got lots of event sheets, but this is also going to be our preload. But this time I'll do preload ES for event sheet. And I'm just going to click on that to load it up as well. So in terms of the layout itself, we don't need to add anything to it. The player is never going to see this. But what it's going to do is when it gets to this layout, it's going to check have we got a save file? If so, put us into the right place. That might be level one, level two, level five. If we haven't got one, start us at the beginning of the game. So let's have a look at the event sheet for this. So first thing we need is to add an event, system, and on start of layout. Now, instead of adding an action, we're gonna first right click and add a function. And just like we did with our save, we're gonna create a load function. Now we're only gonna ever call this once in this video. However, you can call it not only at the start of the game, but if the player dies, you might want to load from the last checkpoint or load from the last time they saved if you're creating sort of old RPG style games. So you can call this function as many times you want when you want. So that's why we're creating it as a function today. So we can actually add an action and call this function now. And then we actually decide what this function does. So instead of adding an action, actually a bit of a shortcut for this is to go to your event sheets, click on the first item, I'm holding shift to click all the others, we're actually going to copy and paste all of these into our event sheet like so. Now, we don't want to set items, so I'm going to double click on each one, go back and do get item. Now, the benefit of doing this method is it will save your key name, so you don't need to remember and type it in again. And this just means you get a lot less mistakes, because if you make a slight typo or you add a capital one there's not supposed to be, that could actually break this code from working. So again, I'm just pressing back, get item, give the key the same key names you gave earlier, and then just hit done. We're just gonna do this for each one. So again, if you've got a big game, this could take quite a while to set up. So it's one of these that once you sort of keep on top of it, it's not too bad. You're only saving ever the key variables. Not every single thing needs to be saved in your game. So stuff like the enemy positions, maybe when your game starts up, the enemies are always in the same place. They load from the same place each time, but you might change stuff like how much health the player's got, what's in their inventory, those sort of variables are the ones we save. So we're gonna add our first event underneath our function. We're gonna scroll down to our local storage once again. And the first thing that we want to look at is on item missing. This means an item does not exist. So the one that we want to check for is actually our save name. This is currently only purpose in this code. However, you could use it for other stuff like if you've got multiple save files. So if this item's missing, then all of these should be missing as well, because we do this one first, and then we do all the others after. So all we're gonna do is add an action, go to our system, and we're gonna do go to layouts, and go to layout one. So this is almost, think of this as a new game option. You've not started the game before, start from the beginning. So this could take you to the main menu instead of a continue screen. Now, if they have got a save file, instead of taking them to the start, we want to actually put them back into the level they were currently on. So we're gonna add some events for this. So local storage, and then we can do on item get, and then we're just gonna type in the names of our different keys. So we'll do them in the order that there are in the video. So we'll start with coins. And again, once we retrieve the coins, what do we want to do with that information? We're actually gonna to go to system, set the value, 
of coins. So our big global variable that we've got. And for this, we're going to use local storage dot item value. So the item value of coins. So that's going to put our uh, value back that we had, which I believe was 29 coins. That's going to be back into the level now. We can then copy and paste this and just repeat for the other variables. So again, we'll do defs next, making sure I'm typing defs exactly the same as in the get item. And then again, what we want to change, we well, want to set the value of defs to local storage the item value. Next, we'll go to our layouts. So again, we'll type it in. Now my layout's got a capital L for some reason. That's something I decided to do. And for this one, I'm gonna change the current layout, local storage item value. I could also do other stuff with this. So my HUD automatically updates with the other code, but you could then change the value of coins in the HUD if you don't do that automatically. You could change obviously the layout you're on at this stage. However, I'm gonna show you a better way of doing that. So you can add more code to each of these once you've retrieved that value. Next, we need to actually do our yellow key. Now this is one of our first ones that are a little bit more tricky. So again, I'm gonna type in yellow key. And if I go to our system actions, you see first of all, there's no option for has yellow key. That's because it's a Boolean. So if I go to set Boolean, I've got has yellow key, but the only options that I've got is true or false. And this is something that I wish Construct would fix, giving us the options to actually set a Boolean by a value. However, there is a workaround that's not too difficult to put in. So I'm gonna delete this line of code. I'm gonna right click and add a sub event. Now we can go down to local storage and we want to make sure we're comparing value. And we're gonna check if the value is equal to one. Now, if the value is equal to one, this is equal to true. If it's equal to zero, it's equal to false. So just as our binary zeros and ones. So if that value is a one, then we can go down to our system variables, set Boolean and change it to true. And then of course we can just copy and paste this line of code, change this from a one to a zero and change this to false. So that's how we get around storing Booleans back. It's a little bit more tricky than normal variables, but it's not hugely difficult once you know what you're doing. Finally, then we've got our array as well. So we're gonna add an event, local storage, we're going to do on item get type in array and then for this one we're going to add an action we're going to go to our array we'll go to load and then we can do local storage dot and then item value and this will load everything back into our array so actually arrays are even easier than booleans are so all of that's happening However, we now need to put them into the correct level. Now, I said you could do this at this stage when you've set the current layout. However, if there's still values loading, they might not all completely load by the time you move to the next level, which could break it. So instead we can add an event and under local storage, there's this really nice option called on or gets complete. So this will check that all of our gets that are currently processing are now finished. And then once that's done, we can then choose what to do. In that case, now we can go to system go to layout by name, and then we can use our current layout, which we've changed already from our save file. So now if I go to my preload layout, hit play, it should put me into level two with the correct information and data that I've collected. So there we go, I'm on level two, I've got four defs, I've got the yellow key, and I've got 49 coins. As always, this file will be available in the description via Google Drive. If you've liked this video, then like it, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.